Okay, once again we have another computation lesson which is entitled Fractions and Decimals. Here are the following objectives. At the end of this lesson you should be able to 1. Perform computation using any of the four basic operations with fractions and decimals. And number 2. Convert among fractions, percentages and decimals. Can you do this question? Two and a half plus one and a quarter. Pause the video and try to solve this problem. What is two and a half plus one and a quarter? Okay, now here we have one whole. We have one half. and another half so what is a fraction a fraction is a part of a whole how to name a fraction steps to name a fraction number one count the number of equal parts in the whole number two Note that the total number of equal parts is called the denominator, the bottom number. Number 3. The numerator, the top number, in a fractional number indicate the number of parts in a whole. 1 2 What have I done? Okay, nice. I have shaded one out of two parts, which is the same thing as a half. Question. What fraction of the whole has the question mark on it? Well, notice, in order for me to get the name of that fraction, I had to divide the whole equally. So now we see that it's one out of four parts, which is written as one over four and is called a quarter. What fraction of the figure above is covered in yellow? The answer here would be two quarters are a half. Now, two quarters and a half are equivalent fractions. Please pay attention to what is being done in this video. Okay, I'm going to use this opportunity to show you that two quarters is equal to one half. Now, here I have one single paper, which I have, which I have already divided into two parts. Here it is. Okay, so we have one, two parts. Now the name of this part is one out of two. And this is also what? One out of two. Now one out of two is called an half. Now how did I get the two parts? Simple, I divide one whole into two parts. Now I have divided another paper into four parts like this so each part one two three and four good so this part here is called a quarter which is one out of four parts now these two will make up what two out of four parts which is the same as four two quarters and then these two parts is another two quarters. So two quarters and two quarters give us one whole. Now two quarters by itself should is equal to what? Let's see. Remember that this is a half. This one is a half. Now when I use two quarters now to cover a half, you can easily see that two quarters is equivalent to an half. 
that clear? Good. Now, what's the difference between the two? Now, two quarters is saying that there's two parts out of four. And one over two, which is one half, is saying that there's one out of two parts. That's the difference. But they are the same value. The two quarters and one half are of the same value. Good. Now equivalent fractions are fractions which represents the same amount. Now try this question. Name the part shaded in red in its lowest term. Note the angle of the part shaded in red is 45 degrees. Pause the video and try this question. Did you get 1 eighth? If not, you should try to do it over before moving on in the lesson. Write an equivalent fraction for one third. Question. Which number is the numerator, the 1 or the 3? Well, the number 1 is the numerator. Which number is the denominator? Well, the number 3 is the denominator. So, what would you do to find an equivalent fraction for one third? Well, this is very simple. All you need to do is to pick a number and use that number to multiply both the numerator and the denominator. For example, I have used 2. So 2 times 1 is equal to 2. And 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So therefore, 2 sixth is equivalent to 1 third. Let's try another number. 3. 3 times 1 is equal to 3, and 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So therefore, 3 ninths is equivalent to 1 third 2. Well, let's try another number. 4 times 1 is equal to 4, and 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So therefore, 4 twelves is equivalent to 1 third. What's the trend? Well, to find the equivalent fraction of a given fraction, you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Try this question. Write 5 fifteenths in its lowest term. Do you know what it means by the lowest term? Do you know how to write a fraction in its lowest term? Step 1. Find the factors of the numerator and also find the factors of the denominator. Do you know how to find the factors of any number? 1 times 5 is equal to 5. That means that 1 and 5 are factors of 5. 1 times 15 is equal to 15. 3 times 5 is equal to 15 too. So then, 1... 3, 5, and 15 are factors of 15. Another way to find the factors of a number is to divide that number by any number and if there is no remainder, then that number is a factor of the number. For example, 15 is divided by 3 equal 5. That means 3 is a factor of 15. But 15 divided by 2 equals 7 remainder 1, which means that is 
2 is not a factor of 15. Now that we have determined the factors of both the numerator and the denominator, we now need to find the highest common factor. Step 2. What are the factors of 5 and 15 again? Factors of 5 are equal to 1 and 5. And factors of 15 are equal to 1, 3, 5 and 15. Now write down both factors of 5 and 15 and then circle the factors common to both. Did you get 1 and 5 as the factors common to both 5 and 15? So which of the two is the highest factor? Did you get 5? Okay, use the 5 to divide both the numerator and the denominator. As you can see, 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. And 5 divided by the same 5 is equal to 3. So note now that 5 fifteenths written in its lowest term is equal to 1 third. In summary, to write a fraction in its lowest term, you must do the following. 1. Find the factors of both numerator and denominator. 2. Identify the highest common factor of both numerator and denominator. And 3. Use the highest common factor to divide both numerator and denominator. Try this question. Write 6 eighteenths in its lowest term. Did you get one third? Do you know the types of fraction? Vulgar fraction. Example of a vulgar fraction is one third, and it's sometimes called a proper fraction. Note that the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Mixed fractions. Example of mixed fraction is two and a half. Note that it has a whole number and a vulgar fraction. Improper fraction. Example of an improper fraction is five quarters. Note that the numerator is greater than the denominator. Addition of fractions. Two and a half plus one and a quarter. What answer did you get for this sum? There are several ways you can add fractions. Let's try this method. Okay, I'm going to show you now that a one way in which we can add the two and a half plus one and a quarter. Now, if you look at both fractions, you will notice that they are both mixed fractions where you have an whole number and a fraction. Now, we can add both whole numbers, two and one, and we'll get three. Good? And then now, we can now begin to add the two fractions, which are vulgar fractions or proper fractions, the half and the quarter. So we can say now half plus a quarter. Right? Note, note that these two fractions must have the same denominator. So what we do is that we find the lowest common multiple of both denominators. And the lowest common multiple of both denominators would have been what? 4. So we put our draw a line or put the 4 below the line. Alright? Now we use the denominator 
to divide this number so we said how many times can 2 go into 4 and that is what 2 times so 2 into 4 is 2 times so we use that 2 and multiply by this one so 2 once 2 and then now we say 4 into 4 goes 1 time and we use that 1 to multiply by this one so we have plus 1 so our final answer then will be 3 and 3 quarters so we will have this 2 plus this 1 so we end up having so our final answer from this would be 3 and 3 quarters What are the important details about the video clip you just watched? 1. Identify the type of fractions 2. If you are working with mixed fractions, add the old numbers first 3. Make sure that the denominators of the fractions are the same. 4. If they are not, then find the lowest common multiple of each. Do you know how to find the lowest common multiple? 2 times 1 is equal to 2. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. And 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Note that the numbers in red are the multiples of 2 and 4 times 1 is equal to 4 and 4 times 2 is equal to 8 and 4 times 3 is equal to 12 and 4 times 4 is equal to 16. Multiples of 2 are equal to 2, 4, 6, 8 etc. And multiples of 4 are equal to 4, 8, 12, and 16, etc. Which multiple is the lowest common multiple? I guess your answer is 4. Let's try a second method. Alright, let's look at another method we can use to add both mixed fractions. So we, once again we have 2 and uh, half plus one and a quarter right now of course you know we add one and two to add the two whole numbers so it is two plus one is equal to three now we have these two fractions now to add so we have one half plus a quarter now we can convert this half into an equivalent fraction where the denominator is the same as 4 now what number when multiplied by this denominator will give us 4 that will be 2 so we we'll use 2 now and multiply both the numerator and the denominator and we'll get 2 over 4 which is an equivalent fraction 4 and half so now that we have both fractions having the same denominator then we can add them so we have 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4 and it will equal to 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 over 4. Very good. So note now that this 2 and a half, this 2 quarters here, sorry, is this half. And this quarter is this quarter here. So all I did was to change the half into an equivalent fraction which has the same denominator as this fraction and then I can add them easily so of course my final answer would be come over here would be 3 and 
three quarters. Good. Let's try a third method. Okay. <clears throat> now let's look at the third method. Now once again we have two and a half plus one and a quarter. Right? Now it is very possible uh, once again we're going to add the two numbers which is two plus one is equal to three so we get that three numbers and we add this two and this one the two whole numbers now we must add the quarters the fraction sorry is a half plus a quarter now what we can do, we can say, use this denominator to multiply by this numerator. So we can say 4 times 1 and then 2 times 1. So we'll have the 4 down here, then we'll have the 2 over here, 2 times 1 is 2. And then we can say 2 times 4, then we get what? 8. So then it'll be 2 over 4 sorry 4 plus 2 which is 6 over 8 now this 6 8 can be written in its lowest term do you remember how we write 6 8 in its lowest term okay you find the highest common factor of 6 and the highest common factor of 8 then use that number to divide both what numbers so the highest common factor of 6 and 8 is 3 sorry 2 rather so we divide both numbers by 2 and then now 2 in the 6 give us 3 2 in the 8 give us 4 and then we have our whole number which is 3 and 3 quarters so that is another way of doing this question let's try a fourth method <laughs> okay let us look at a final method that we could use this is more like a practical idea so once again we're going to have our two and a half and this could be equal to you know a set of x's so one set has four x in it so one whole set has four x then we have another set this is another 4x there's two holes so two holes are sets there are two sets of x's so this is one set two set now half a set now should have how many x's good it has to be what two x's right now one and a quarter will have one set with four x's but how many x's will be in a quarter all right that will be one very good so notice now we have three full sets that's how we get one plus two here it is we have three full sets that's why one plus two which is three and then now we have three out of we have one two and three which will be three out of one set and a set is what four so that will be three out of four and also we get three quarters so that's a simple little method i could use to show that two and a half plus one and a quarter is equal to three and three quarters all right so i'm going to give you a question to try now try this question one and one fifth plus one and two thirds the answer is two and 
13 15 okay how do we do this is that your question Try okay now i'm going to show you how to subtract three and two thirds and i'll subtract actually minus a half from three and two thirds now note that this is a mixed fraction and this is a vulgar fraction now three and two thirds is seem to say that i have three different O's and two third of one so I'll shade these two so one two three and two thirds now I'll take a half from this three and two thirds now so this is what I'm going to do now I could simply take away a half from this, a half from this, or a half from this. But it is not necessary to take a half from this and this. But I can take a half from this one. Good. Now this third is not supposed to be in it. So this is two thirds. But the reason why I leave this two thirds in it is because you have to show that it is two thirds of a whole. Now there are several ways in which this could be done and we're going to take the easier approach first the easier approach is to simply put the three aside and then take away the half from the two thirds now you can simply multiply this denominator by this numerator so two times two is four then you multiply this denominator by this numerator here like that and you say 3 times 1 is 3 and you minus and then of course you multiply across 3 twos 6 you put a 6 right here so what we have see 4 minus 3 over 6 so what we now have is 1 over 6 so what is left now let me write the 6 properly good like that so what we have left then is 3 and 1 6 so our answer then will be let me erase it can I erase right here alright good so I would have for my final answer 3 and one six good perfect okay let's look at another method that you could use to subtract uh, three and two thirds minus a half now this three is an old number right now we could we want to ensure all right we're going to write this three as a fraction but we must make sure that the denominator is the same as three now we're going to simply say three three is nine then you put the three here good then you can add two thirds to nine thirds because 9 thirds is the same thing as 3 holes in other words let me show you let us say that we had this is one hole right this is another hole right this is another hole right so these are 3 holes which is this 3 but if I divide this into 3 I divide this into 3 I divide this into 3 question how many thirds do I have Remember that this is one third, another third, another third, one other third, another third, another third, another third, another third, and another third. So how many thirds do we have right there? Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine thirds. So nine thirds is the same thing as three holes. 
Alright. So what I'm going to do now is to add this to this. Remember when you're adding fractions the, new, the denominator must be the what? Same. So 9 plus 2 will give us 11 over 3. So 11 thirds. Now I'm going to subtract now a half from the 11 thirds. Good. Now once again we can say 2 times 11 is 22. And then 3 times 1 is 3. Good. And then we come below here. 3, 2, 6. Good. There's a 3 from 22 is how much? 17. No. 18. No. 19. Yes. So we have what? 19 sixths. But guess what? This fraction is what type of fraction? It's a improper fraction but we want to convert this improper fraction to a mixed fraction so our answer can look you know better so we're going to divide this 19 by this 6 so we can ask ourselves how many times can 6 go into 19 all right let's erase this we should have taken this off already all right so we're going to see then how many times can 6 goes into 19. Now 6 into 19 goes how many times? You could say 3. So 3 6 is 3 times 6 is what? 18. Cut the 18 here. Then minus. And then 18 from 19 is 1. So this 3 becomes our own number in our answer. And then this 1 becomes the remainder. So 3 and 1 6. Very good. Now you could you could move from this improper sorry mixed fraction to improper fraction by doing what? Multiplying six times three it was eighteen plus one it was nineteen. Very good. This question two and a half minus two thirds. What's your answer for this question? Is it 1 and 5 sixths? How do you do this question? Okay, now I'm going to show you how to multiply fractions. Simple. Now a half times 2 quarters. In multiplying fractions, you multiply numerator by numerator and you multiply denominator by denominator so 1 times 2 is equal to 2 and 2 times 4 is equal to 8 now of course this 2 eighths can be written in its lowest term and of course you know you need to find the highest common factor of the numerator and the denominator then divide both numbers by the same number so the highest common factor of 2 is 2 I mean highest common factor of 2 and 8 sorry is 2 so 2 into 2 goes 1 and 2 into 8 goes 4 simple so the main thing to remember when multiplying fractions is to multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. Now you might be asking, what if I you had mixed fractions? All right, let's try something else then. Now suppose you had two and a half times one and a quarter. Well. You could simply change the mixed fraction into an improper fraction. How do we do that? 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2. Good. 
then 4 times 1 plus 1 is 5 over 4 then we multiply across 5 fives 25 2 fours 8 now this is an improper fraction and of course you know how to change from an improper fraction to a mixed fraction by dividing what the numerator by the denominator let's do, let's look at that now so we have 8 into 25 and 3 times 3 eighths 24 minus 1 and that will give us 3 and 1 8 simple now go now and do your try this question remember to multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator now try this question two thirds times one and a half did you get one how do we do this okay I'm going to show you how to divide fractions now so we'll be using one and a half good divided by a quarter now if you note we have a mixed fraction and a proper fraction now the first thing is to do if you if you have a mixed fraction you want to convert the mixed fraction to an improper fraction so two ones two plus one is three the so three halves divided by a quarter now this is where you need to pay attention you're going to write this 3 over 2 as it is you're going to change from the division sign to multiplication they're going to invert this fraction now how we invert the fraction we put the 4 over the 1 in other words we put a denominator where the numerator is put a numerator where the denominator is and then we multiply across so 3 fourths 12 2 ones 2 now of course 12 halves, 12 halves is equal to what? 6 so if you divide this 12 by this 2 you will get 6 and that's the answer so once again if you are given a mixed fraction to be divided by a proper fraction you first convert the proper fraction to an improper fraction then you write everything as is now then you carry this side of the fraction the question down here change the sign and then the fraction on this side you will invert it by placing the numerator sorry the denominator where the numerator is and the numerator where the denominator is and then you have this you multiply across you get your 12 multiply across you get your 2 where you see you can divide without getting a remainder you divide so 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6 and that is how you multiply fractions now once again go ahead and do your try this question now try this question a half divided by a quarter did you get two okay I'm going to show you how to convert from fractions to decimals now let's start with a more simple one first a half to be converted to decimal now the rule is that you're going to divide the numerator by the denominator so here we go we're going to put our division 
sign there place the denominator here and place the numerator here now 2 into 1 we can't so place a 0 then a decimal point good then we add a 0 here now 2 into 10 is 5 so 2 times 5 is 10 write a 10 right there then you minus and you get zero very good so point so a half in decimal is the same as 0 0.5 let's look at another example what if we had say an improper fraction like five quarters to do the same thing place a sign there put the number denominator there the numerator here now four into five you can but how many times one time so you say four once four minus then it one now you continue from here so it's a 4 into 1 goes you can't you place a decimal point this time then you add a 0 and then you say 4 into 10 goes 2 times and you say 2 times 4 is equal to 8 you subtract you get 2 you continue they say 4 into 2 I can't you add a 0 4 into 20 is 5 so 5 times 4 is 20 and you get a minus 20 from it and you get 0 so our answer is then 1 point good, 2 5 so we are saying that 5 quarters is equal to 1.25 so the whole, if you recognize, we don't stop dividing until we get zero. Very good. All right. So that's why you change from fractions to decimal. Now, what if we had a mixed fraction? And if you had a mixed fraction, this is what you would do let's say three and a quarter now we don't have to do anything with the three but keep it to the side right but we can convert a quarter to decimal by simply place more four here and our one there four into one we can't put a zero there put a point there then put our ten 4 to 10 we go 2 times 2 4 is 8 we minus we get 2 so it's not yet 0 so we add a 0 to it because 4 to 2 we can't so 4 to 20 is 5 and 4 5 is 20 and we minus we get 0 so therefore a quarter is 0 0.25 so we we'll add the 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. So 3.25. Okay, dokie. Now, another interesting thing. What if we were, say, adding decimals? Uh, 1.25 plus 0.25 very easy the 5 plus 5 is 10 they carry the 1 2 plus 2 is 4 and 1 5 and 1.50 so adding decimals is not that difficult right subtracting the same way. All difference should be 
subtracted. However, if you were to multiply or divide decimals, it is the best to convert from decimals to fractions and then work with it in the fraction form and then you're going to convert from the fraction form back to decimals. To me, it's easier that way. So let's now look at converting from decimals to fractions. Now, if you had say 0 0.01, note the number of decimal places. It's two decimal places. So that suggests that your numerator, your denominator, sorry, will be 100. So you place the 1 over the 100. So that is the fraction. Let's look at another example. What if you're going to convert 0 0.1 to fractions? We've got a number of decimal place. Very good. So it's 1. So it suggests that it's 10. Good. Now what we use, we are always going to, we are always going to have a 1 there. But the zeros is determined by the number of decimal place. So we have one decimal place, one zero. So we place our one. So one over ten is the same thing as zero point one. Let's look at another example. What if we had one point C zero one? What would that answer be? Well, we have our whole number and we know that zero we know that 0 0.01 is the same thing as 1 over 100. Good. Alright, so you see, what we're basically doing is counting the number of decimal places, always have a 1, and put our zeros according to the number of decimal places. Now let's try another one. Alright, this time I'm going to say 2.13. We're going to convert 2.13 to fractions. Now, 2 is an old number here, so we'll have our 2 right here. The number that comes before the decimal point is an old number. Now, how many decimal places do I have? 2. So, I need my 1 and my 2 zeros. And then I write my 13. Simple. There's 2 and 13 over 100. Let's try another example. What if I had say two point two five? No, I have my two again. How many decimal places? Two zeros. Put a twenty-five. No, this twenty-five over one hundred can be written in a lower term. Once the numerator is divisible by the numer, sorry, correction, once the denominator is divisible by the numerator, then you can go ahead and divide the denominator by the numerator. Now 25 in itself goes one time, 25 and 100 goes four times. So our answer is two and a quarter. Very good. Now we have come to the end of another lesson created by Ronique Bernard. Once again, we just want to give you thanks for staying tuned with CDP Maths Lab, and also we want to ask you and remind you. To read your Bible, pray every day, a prayer day, keep the devil away. With God, all things are possible. Stay tuned to CDP Maths Lab.